You often hear stories about project cars that go on and on and they're never ending. Well, today I'm going to show you a project car, which is my longest running car. It's still never finished. It's never been started. It's become the butt of jokes, really. But it's a very special car to me. It predates my marriage. It predates my children, predates social media and everything. And it's the never ending story. It is this. The 1964 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport Low Rider Project. I'm Johnny Smith and welcome to The Late Break Show. Okay, you might want to pull up a chair for this one because it's a big old saga and it's been going on for so long. I bought this car in 2003. I think it was the end of 2003. And this is not my first Impala. So let's start there. Why do I like 1964 Impalas? I'm pretty sure it's when I watched the film Boys in the Hood when that came out, which was what, 92? the Cuba Gooding, um, Lawrence Fishburne film with all the low riders. Now, actually, the car in the film was a 63 Impala, but that really spurred on this whole fascination with low riders. Low riding culture, hydraulic suspension, reinforced chassis, mad paintwork. And I suppose me back then, I just thought this is amazing. Back in the late 90s, sort of 98, I bought my first um, car that became a low rider, a Mark I for Granada. And I ended up in my first journalism job, actually. I used that car every day for three years, street parked and saved up and got it converted with hydraulics from a company in the UK called Max Hydraulics. Uh, two pumps, 24 volts, could drive it on three wheels, could hop the back. It was brilliant. Then I sold that car because I realized that deep down I wanted an American car as a low low. And I wanted specifically, my favorite shape was the 64 Impala. Bearing in mind, American cars change their shape every year. So how did this car come to be? Well, I was in the low rider forum on a, on a low rider UK um, club of which there's not many. There's low riding is not a big thing in the UK, it's very niche, um, but a close community. There was a guy on there that had imported this. And this is a 64 Super Sport. So this is top of the range car at the time, two door only, um, bucket seats, center console, uh, floor shift auto. And this had been imported as a project with no engine. And it had been found in a salvage yard in Oklahoma where it had sat for decades. And I've got some really grainy early digital pictures of that car. Bearing in mind, remember, there was no social media. There wasn't uh, smartphones or anything like this when I got this car. I arranged to buy this car because he wasn't going to sell it. But I said, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. And he phoned me up one day on New Year's Day and said, I've got some debts to pay. Do you want to buy it? So I did. Between me buying it and collecting it, Cumbria, where he was based, had the worst floods in living memory and this narrowly escaped being washed down a river um, into the sea. Then I collected it and then the restoration kind of started. And I'll talk through the different elements of the resto. But yeah, basically what I had was the top of the range Chevy Impala, bought for a really good price, fairly solid, no engine, no gearbox, and missing a number of other spares, which uh, parts which I didn't realize at the time. Uh, but I would kind of had the dream, and this was the start of the dream. So where did I begin? I began by stripping, I took a week off work, and I stripped the car down to bare metal with, um, uh, with a wire wheel and um, in a shed. I lived in, on, a, on a farm in the middle of nowhere with no phone signal, no other people for a week. I slept in the back of a car. Uh, it was a Toyota Corolla Verso. <laughs> and I just bare metaled it on my own. It was actually really relaxing. I remember it well. Um, there's no video of all this stuff. It's all just still pictures. So you'll have to just, um, I'll dig out all the pictures of these, these things. Once the car had been stripped, it was then a case of, deciding, right, what we're gonna do. We need to now remove the body from the chassis because a lot of American cars are separate chassis. It's, it's kind of a small lorry chassis under there. And the 61 to 64 Impalas have what they call an X frame. So the, the chassis, when you look down on it, is an X shape. Um, 
The body went off to a company called Custom Colors down in Dorset, and they embarked on the restoration of it. It was fairly solid, like I said, all things considered, and it was a triple red car originally. So that means red body, red roof, red interior. I'm not a massive fan of red, and I've ultimately only kept the red interior because I, I like that kind of oxblood interior, but I wanted it to be more of a goldy kind of champagne. But anyway, that was a long way off. Whilst the body was being done, being completely blasted bare, um, it had a new rear quarter panel on the side where that side, I think, where the fuel filler is. Uh, I had to buy a whole rear quarter, which is about eight feet long, had to fly in that panel, which was a huge expensive panel. And I've kept the old one for posterity to put on the wall of the office one day. Um, and a couple of floor repairs inside here. The boot was really good, the boot floor. Um, the doors were really good, the sills were really good. Meanwhile, the chassis went off to one guy to start its reinforcement process. And the chassis really is box section. And each side of the box was plated with six mil steel. So you can imagine the armor plating we're talking about here um, and the amount of welding. The first guy I employed to do it kind of let me down. So I took the chassis away from him and I went to another guy, I won't name any names, who was fantastic at welding but had a bit of a marijuana habit and it took a really long time. <laughs> it was just a saga in itself. But you'll see from the pictures, it turned into this huge, heavy duty tuning fork of a chassis really. Um, and then the body could be painted before going back on the chassis. So the chassis was painted white with gold flake because I wanted to make a bit of a thing of the chassis. Remember, low riders are all about detail and that's one of the reasons why this car has taken so long. There's a lot of detail and I've tried to do it to the best it can be done within the budget. So once the car was um, back on the body, back on the chassis, painted, um, then it went to a guy who I won't name, who uh, was going to source an engine and gearbox for me and fit it, and he, he dicked me around, and was still a bit bitter about that. Um, so it went off to a chap called Andy Frost, who you might know from Red Victor One, the, the infamous dragster, road legal dragster. Andy um, rebuilt an TH400 gearbox, auto gearbox, that I bought um, secondhand, um, that came out of a Corvette and uh, reinforced the back axle and rebuilt the back axle and then fitted um, a 350, a crate General Motors 350 5.7 V8 and that came out of a hot rod in Essex, here in Essex, um, uh, from a 32 hot rod that um, was owned by a guy called John Golding. So the engine doesn't have any heritage and this car, like I said, was never bought with an engine or transmission. It was, I think that had been pulled out long ago in a salvage yard in Oklahoma. And I just wanted, this was never gonna be a fast car. I just wanted a car that was gonna be um, kind of mechanically strong and a good cruiser, really. So the engine is now in, but it's still not um, finished uh, fully wired and plumbed in. Um, and the gearbox is, is not quite finished yet. We'll go on to that in a bit. Uh, but the back axle is, is in, fitted. And we've mocked up the reinforced um, suspension, uh, but that hasn't been finished either. You, are you noticing a, a, a pattern here? Not finished yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then what happened is the car got to a pretty um, good state with painted rolling chassis, uh, engine in, but not wired or, or plumbed and transmission. And then it kind of just sat in my garage for at least four years, might be five years, I think. But then I met a guy called Simon, and Simon Browse, who owns Arrow Vintage Cars, and that's where it is today, in this beautiful um, Essex garage with some amazing vintage Cadillacs and Rolls Royces. Simon actually contacted me through, through social media and kind of said, what are you doing with this car? This it never seems to do anything. It needs finishing, it needs doing right. And that conversation led on to about a dozen more conversations and then it wound up with him saying, I will help you finish this car. I know how to do it. I know the standard you wanna to work to and I understand you've been knobbed around by a number of people. 
So if you trust me, we can do this. And fair play to him, that's how it has got to this state today. This is Simon. Simon's a lovely guy with the patience of a saint. And you, well, I can't remember when this came to you. About three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd, you'd remember. <laughs> It's, it's, it, you make it sound awful. It's, 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 no. Parts of it have gone better than, 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 you know, than, yeah, yeah, yeah. than some. Yeah. The, the complex, the, the, the difficulties in this car have always been, it's a great mix. I say great, it's a great mix of original authentic parts, aftermarket versions of original parts, yeah. and custom parts. Yeah. And that's always the challenge when you mix the three. Yeah. Um, it's I a pleasure and an honour to work on. So I gave the car to you with re bumpers, the bumpers on this car are all original. I found new old stock overriders. We bought, I bought many, many new repro parts like some of the bright work, but we tried to keep as much of the original trim as we could. And we'll show you as I go around the car, but the Super Sport model has one fat side trim uh, that goes all the way down. Well, it's, it's three pieces, but it's one band and it's engine turned anodized aluminium isn't it absolutely yeah and that's echoed inside the car there's engine turning on the dash it's 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 what makes the ss special with its center console we tried to keep that so all this trim is actually the same age as the car and there are parts of it that you needed to straighten and polish i know you've done an awful lot of straightening and polishing. a lot a lot of polishing but I, th I think that's key there are you know these cars if you don't mind me saying um they're not particularly rare especially in america in europe that they they, they 64 impalas are around. They sold a lot of them. They sold a lot of them. Yeah. But very, very few have their original trim. Very, very few. The, the aftermarket is, is crazy. Everything's available, yeah. but the quality's not there. And in fact, you, you probably can't see it in the video, but when the car is finished one day and it's out in the big wide world, I'm sure people will go, oh, it's a shame that there's some scratches on the end of that trim, and it's a shame there's a little dink there. Well, that's because as much of it as possible, I've wanted to put back, because if you renew everything, what are you left with? Are you left with much of a historic car? Trigger's broom. Yeah, and there is a bit of a trigger's broom there. So I wanted to try and make sure, and that's why I did buy this car, because a lot of it was good. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen it. It's been a while since I've seen it. So 350 Chevy, as I said before. So the engine is not, is not particularly sacred at all. It's a, a GM good wrench. Uh, like a, a, a new reconditioned... Yeah, from 1995, from the Daco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was bought with about 3,000 miles on it from a, from a hot rod guy who was putting a Hemi in his. So I thought, okay. And then the engine was in, but the reinforced chassis had had a number of changes done on it, which meant that the engine and the steering system didn't quite fit as well as it should have done. So th this is where the problem kind of started. Um, in fact, let's start, Simon, with what you've done to the engine. Yeah, so it was, it was a completely bare block, and from where the chassis was strengthened and thickened yeah. and changed and augmented, um, we had to make allowances and, and adaptions to try and get the engine to fit, which is what you, you and, um, and and Andy Frost were doing when you, when you fitted the engine the first yeah. time round. Yeah. So this 350 is a completely different sized engine, completely different shape. It bears very little relation to the, the 327 that should have been in there, 427. 327, 327 this that's was. right. Yeah. Um, so it's in a very different position. The chassis is thicker, so we had to look at um, exhaust manifolds, which was the first oh, task. Yeah, yeah because yeah. It, it came with a set of of headers, which are separate individual exhaust Tub outlets, tubular headers. tubular headers. And they didn't fit? No, they, they basically aim straight at the cross member, which is a big bit of chassis underneath that supports the engine. Yeah, um, I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah. So yeah, people think that 350 small blocks are all the same, but they're not. They started making them in 1955. Five, yeah. Um, and there's been an awful lot of derivatives. I just bought what I thought was a normal 350, but that was in good condition. And it was, apart from the fact that it is a different era. It is. Different dimensions, harder to put inside the engine when it sits a little higher because yep. of the chassis that we'd reinforced in preparation for the 
hydraulics, larger heavier gearbox at the rear which also denotes the position within the body because you've got a transmission tunnel that you know I have to clear so that all needs yeah. to move as a cone forward or backwards to fit properly. Yeah because this this is a three speed the TH400 and this car would have only ever had a power glide which is a two speed smaller box. Smaller box. So what you've done I know you've put these ram's horn style headers on which clear the front cross member and the engine mount. That's right. Um, um, and that's so that they're the same manifold both sides. So the clearance on that side was an issue because of the starter motor, which yep. is obviously in a, in a bit of a precarious position right at the exhaust. It is, yeah. Um, so now we have identical exhaust both sides. Yep. And that should make the aesthetics underneath a bit cleaner because you're going to be looking at two identical pipes coming down underneath the car heading yep. towards the back. So yep. that, that's going to work in our favour. Yep. Um, gone is the uh, non-power assisted master cylinder and you've bought an enormous it is an enormous booster servo assisted. servo assisted. You can see it stands quite proud of the, the bulkhead. Yeah. Simon runs Arrow Vintage Cars. How many American cars have you got? In uh, six now. Six okay. in American cars. And yeah. these cars get used most days of the year, yeah. come wind, rain or shine. Absolutely. Um, so you know where to get a lot of American car parts. The yeah. hardest bit to get, I think, in the UK are panels. Absolutely. And pa trim. Panels and trim, whereas yeah. engine parts are, are way more plentiful, especially because V8s were fitted in other things that weren't American. But yeah, I mean, there's been an enormous amount of things that have come over from the States, uh, but also stuff from the UK. Uh, that company, ABS Power Brake, I ordered. I ordered a disc brake conversion because um, it did. This had just drums all round, which uses calipers and I think discs from a Caprice. From a Caprice, that's right. From a yeah. later, from a later car, um, drums on the back. Um, obviously servo assisted, like we said. So just to me, as kind of as good as it as it can be, really. Yeah. Um, and still fit inside what is a very small diameter wire wheel, which is. You have to go small diameter if you're going to go on a low rider, deep dish, small diameter wire. We'll look at those in a minute. Rest of the engine. So we got a kit from Quick Performance. Yes. Which allowed us to use um, a slightly larger water pump for more cooling. Yeah. And it enabled us to have a power steering pump and an alternator uh, and with a conventional auxiliary belt drive, which is a big advantage to a fan belt. Yeah. We've got a lot more surface friction, a lot yeah. more efficient, drags less power. Yeah. Um, so all of, this, all of this kit was brought in from them. Uh, we didn't really have a cooling system, did we? We didn't have a cooling system, no. We no. didn't have quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, as you say, there's no fan being driven from the, from the engine anymore. It's now got Spal, a pair of electric fans which are on the back of this aluminium aftermarket radiator. Car. Is this 18 feet? A bit more than 18? I think it's just over 18 feet. Yeah, it's, it's 5.6 metres. So yeah. whatever that is in, in, in feet. So, um, but it's the amount of space here that's just empty space with nothing. And all of this ostensibly is <laughs> empty space with nothing. And yet we're still crunched in the, <laughs> the firewall. But that's, that's the American 50s and 60s style. The engine ends and you've just got like feet before yeah. you reach the front of the car. I didn't want a fully chromed engine bay. Uh, I th should we gloss over the steering? No, should we talk about, I mean, the steering on this car has been an absolute pain in the back door. Yeah. yeah. And that is because I didn't keep a close tab on the guy reinforcing the chassis. And he kind of cut off and didn't put back on certain key parts, bracketry, uh, holes that were important to the steering box, which is down there on Simon's side, bolting to the side of the chassis. And then we it fouled the cross member with the steering rods, but it has got the heater box go, going back in. Um, brand new motor. Brand new motor, yeah, yeah. And I know you've put a fuel pump on it, and it, like you said, it's got a water pump on it now. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, we can take and show that later, but the carburetor is a four barrel Edelbrock. Yes. Um, 650 CFM. Yes. So lots and lots of juice with a lot of fantastic throttle mechanism. Uh, we, did, we didn't have an accelerator pedal, did we? We, we didn't have no an accelerator pedal. No, about that. no. And actually, I, I've, I, the carb on this is the old carburetor from my Dodge Charger. Um, when the engine was rebuilt on the Charger, I had a, a, a slightly smaller carb, and it's been a really good carb, actually. It was new. 
but I've changed that to a, a double pumper Holly, which works better with a manual gearbox. And I thought, well, that car will be good for this. So that's why that carb is now on here. The headlights are from, if they look a little bit different, I love this clear lens with the kind of Art Deco style um, chrome uh, crosshair in there. These are from a Jag. These are from a Jaguar XJR X308 right. series, I think. And I got given these as a wedding present from Ian Callum, uh, who was the head of, uh, the design director of Jag. And I said to him, I think these will fit. They're five and three quarter inch. Five and three quarter inch, that's it. And sure enough, he sent, he sent them through. He, I'm sure he paid for them. I was gonna talk about the weight. We don't know how heavy this car is yet. And we won't know until it's, it's up to full curb weight. But I think the chassis is probably two and a half times heavier than what it was. Absolutely. I mean, so it, this, this is really, this is a sort of a blinged armoured car, yeah. Yeah. isn't it? So damn sight heavier. And that's why it was never going to be a quick car. I don't want to drive it fast, frankly. Um, it just needed torque, yeah. um, cruisability. But yeah. The Impala has got this got a seriously strong chassis on it now. Okay, this is when the detail started to get maybe a bit out of control. So I wanted the underside of the car to be well represented. So when the chassis was painted white with a gold metal flake, um, we were like, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Then when the rear axle was reinforced and rebuilt, we had that, um, plated and cut out we had that laser cut with beauty parlor that's the nickname of the car project beauty parlor you can see these trailing arms aren't finished but these are heavily armored as well and they've been notched out to have what they call the power ball suspension arms fitted and you can see the purple coil springs they're like four ton hopping springs we took away the banana bar the sort of support bar for the back axle that's now got what they call a wishbone like a y piece that mounts on the top that so that when the suspension goes up really high the back axle doesn't move around left to right. It stays located. That, that's a brand new fuel tank that was painted ermine um, white, the same as the roof. And that's all new. You can see this is all the boot floor. There are a couple of dents and things in the boot floor. They're the original dents. The car was really quite solid at the back here. And the wheel arches were really solid too. New body mounts fitted um, there as well. And new, new, new drum brakes here at the back. So we've got to finish got to finish this part we'll probably put some titanium scrape blocks back here so that when the suspension goes down you can scrape the back and spark it a bit intentionally it's all very mature low riding this is the most expensive car I've ever um, bought in terms of money spent on it it was a cheap car to buy in the first place I'm not gonna lie I got it for pretty cheap um, but yeah the amount of money I've spent on this and it's still not finished is uh, quite horrific bloody love it in here I know it's not finished still, but what's been done is just really solid. It's a happy place to be, isn't it? Yeah, and I remember when I chose the colour for the exterior, and we've got some incredibly red carpet to go in. It's quite vibrant. Yeah. But I dig it. So we start, well, first of all, when the car was painted, um, the floors were painted in pour 15 paint. I think there was ink primed and then pour 15, so it's that really hammer resistant yeah very hard wearing incredibly really. hard wearing paint what was the first job you did with the interior was it the headliner first job yeah yeah first job was the mocking up of the what's called the sail panels which is just to your right which are these with the, with the courtesy lighting yeah yeah uh second job was to mock up and lay out the parcel shelf which is that panel all across the back yeah and then yeah the the, the, the main first fitted piece was the headliner which was a. Uh, uh, it was actually a material you imported, didn't you? you it was. It's, it's called the star fabric, um, I think. And you, if you look, there's little tiny stars in it, which was a General Motors fabric. And uh, I, I love it. I think it's fun, fantastic. Yeah. It's original original equipment. And, and of course, to put the headliner in, the you couldn't. You had to wait until you put the um, the windows in. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so all the, all the glass went in before any kind of door panels. Yeah. Um, the first job with the with the headliner was actually to, to get it uh, out of its box and to leave it on a car in the heat of on a car's roof at the height of summer in 30 oh. degree weather to get all the wrinkles out as yeah. many as possible. Yeah. So it actually spent a day and a half outdoors before it went indoors into, in, indoors. into this car. 
Yeah. I was missing a couple of bows. I remember that. Yeah. Um, I had to get some imported from the States from a car that was found in a forest by my friend PJ uh, from Tennessee. Being an SS, it has two separate front seats. You can see they, they hinge forward. There's no locking mechanism. And that's mostly what differentiates it from the other Impalas. Um, it would have had a bench seat for a lower ranking car. My, my right-hand drive car did actually. And you've got the center console, which runs down the middle there with engine turned um, anodized aluminum. It's a lovely feature, the, the auto shifter there. Um, you can't see it because it's not in there yet, but it has a completely horizontal speedo um, that's probably somewhere down here in a box. Yeah. And that's a speaker. Again, a beautiful feature on the, uh, the Impala, but it, that little cutout there, that is, a, that is an actual original speaker grill. I wanted to keep the original wheel. I love the, the weathered patina of the steering wheel. The steering wheel tells a story on a car. You know, it's been held for all the miles it's been driven. And um, I just like it. It was a bit of a story though, wasn't it? Because you did buy an alternative yeah. steering wheel, didn't you? Yeah. And painted it in, in the, body the color. blood red, wasn't it, that you, yeah. that you found? Yeah. And you were eyeing up both wheels together yeah. for about a year. I know, it was, it was. Because <laughs> a load of people said, just put a new wheel on. I was like, I just, yeah. don't, I just don't know. I just And this feels nice. It feels right. And it's just sort of that nicely worn... Look, and I really love the shape of the roof on this, actually. It's got these creases in the back of the roof on the 64, which makes it emulate a convertible rag top, mm. but it isn't. And that's why I like the two-tone, and two-tone was pretty common, wasn't it, back then? Yeah. Um, Although this is a what we would call a, a coupe, it's two-door you know, car. It's yeah. actually called a hardtop. The American version is two-door two hardtop. Hard so top. you had a, 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 a Impala SS soft top. Yeah. And Impala SS hard top. Hard top. top. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you could buy uh, the four door as a four door with pillars or a four door open, which is a four door hard top, which is what my right hand drive car was. I think that car's still alive somewhere. The center console with the floor shift. Now, that is the original style of um, shifter. It isn't the original. The original got lost. Uh, I, I still don't know who lost it, uh, but I bought the car with one. Um, and of course, because it's a four-speed auto, it's a different linkage uh, setup. This is now a cable linkage, That's isn't right. it? That's right, yeah. And that came from a company called Shiftworks in the States. And they recondition original handles as well. So I, d I decided to go down that road for a more precise layout. Um, the seats were recovered years ago, 2007, something like that. And I bought the, the vinyl kits um, and I had a chap called Michael Frewer do these. Um, I'm looking forward to these. And then the carpet set, as I said, the carpet set was bought as a kit and imported. The door cards were imported, but you had to do an enormous amount of work on those because it didn't come with any of the trim. So you had to transplant the original trim back over and badges to this. Yep. No pre holes drilled, completely blank. Yeah. Completely blank canvas. Yeah. Yeah. We yep. did a little bit of custom work on the armrest. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. inside. That originally would have been all painted the same color as the rest of the interior. Yeah. But we made a call that we actually polished off the paint and left what is now a polished aluminium surround yeah. with a lovely extra cushion. So yeah. put some more foam in. I centre like armrest so it'll be comfortable and i think it themes better with the turned aluminium yeah style and as i said it's it, although this is going to be a low rider it's sort of a, a traditional tasteful low rider in so much it's not covered in murals really it's not it, it's not a custom dash i don't like aftermarket steering wheels particularly on cars like this i love the original wheel i love the the color i love the chrome the, the impala logo it's just it's that combination of chrome and vibrant vinyl. Yeah. So the wheels on a low rider, they're like, they're always wire wheels. These are the traditional knockoff, spindle fit, deep dish, 100 spokes these are. I bought these, I remember I bought these in 2001 and had them imported from Los Angeles and they, they were, they've been sat for years in boxes and I finally got them to put them on the car. So these are 14s, a lot of traditional low, low riders are 13s, but I wanted to make sure I could clear the discs uh, and the calipers. This is an aftermarket kit, as I said before, um, and they fit 
with a with a hammer you knock them off you can see also the the suspension arms here these are these wishbones have been heavily armored they're not quite finished yet the ball joints haven't been um, fitted tightly equally simon's put all of the bits on the car bolted padded if need be to avoid any kind of chafing nobody likes chafing um, and he's just in the middle now of um, of connecting up the brake hard lines and the fuel hard lines as well simon's got the doors to shut just nice i think that shape is just wonderful and i had a guy called neil melliard of a company called prosign and he's hand applied all this real gold leaf and the pinstriping that goes from there all the way up there along there on the roof and this was all painted on before the car was finally lacquered so this is now covered up with lacquer and i wanted something that was sort of custom but not too in your face not too leery it's sort of quite traditional and there's a bit of it um engine turned nuss to the um the gold leaf which echoes that in the trim you can see the trims had a you know it's it's it had some knocks in places but i quite like that about it i don't want it to be everything ultra pristine so as you can see there's still quite a lot of things to do but i'm quite patient i've waited this long we can wait a bit more and the stuff that's been done is is really really good and i'm really pleased with that i didn't see the point in kind of rushing it and throwing it together especially as a car that's designed to kind of get punished but be able to withstand it feels weird sitting in the driver's seat because i've never as I said, I've never driven or uh, started the thing up. You've just reminded me, actually, I've got to get it registered. I did buy that number plate. That is my number plate, but it's on a certificate. I need to get it on, registered on the car because the car's never been UK registered still. And it came in in 2000, the millennium. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you so much, uh, Simon, for uh, just continually chipping away at this project because it's been a beast. Very well. And you're used to tackling some beasts, some landlords. Yeah, ones, yeah. But mostly original ones. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, it's always going to be a challenge, but I, we'll win. We're not going to give up. No, no I really, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I have to say, Very welcome. just seeing it as, as it sits now, it looks like a complete car, yeah. largely. Um, but there's still quite a lot to go. But it's such, it makes such a big difference when you open the garage door and you see a full face. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because it hasn't been this complete in, in decades and decades and decades. No, no, no. And every day it gets further along. Every day it gets more complete. Yeah, yeah. And I guess this is a car for life for me. I've had it so long now. And I have had, I've got to say, it has been a real roller coaster. There's been times where I've got so fed up with the fact that either a, something doesn't fit or somebody's let me down or I've made the wrong decision. I've just shut the garage door and just walked away. And I haven't come back for four months sometimes. But you know bringing it to you was actually the best decision it was it was the best decision i made because i don't think it was ever going to get finished otherwise no. <laughs> it had sat in suspended animation for five years yeah 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 there's something a bit shameful about having a car that got freshly painted in 2008 and no one's ever seen it it's no. never been out on the road you've never driven it i've never bloody driven it <laughs> i mean how weird's that it's the most expensive car I own. It's never even started up. What a beautiful ornament, though, I have to say. Beautiful. It is. It is. I know. And all because of gangster rap. I need to say a big thank you to Haynes, who support my playlist of project cars on The Late Break Show. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing, if you've subscribed. Um, what do you want to see more of on this project? Do you want to see more of certain elements? If so, let me know in the comments. Thanks ever so much, Simon. Very welcome. All right, I'll see you soon. Take care. I'm definitely going now. All right. I would like to drive in your beer. It's. I'm going to have to come back and drive that at some point. That's stunning. <laughs>